What's up everybody? I just filmed a super good interview with Jackson Foster at Plantriotic on YouTube. Dive in, there's a lot of gems in this interview. I really hope you guys enjoy it. If so, give the like button a push and leave your comments, leave some feedback. Thanks so much. All right guys, we're here with Jackson Foster, Plantriotic on YouTube. Hey there brothers and sisters. Sitting in the California sunshine. Can't the beat forest. it. Had a nice peaceful morning, got some work done, went for a walk, had a meditation session. Absolutely. Yeah, it's been good connecting with this guy over the last few days during his time in Berkeley. How was your ecstatic dance experience that I brought Dude. you to? <laughs> ecstatic dance, that is, um, that's, I need to turn that into a regular practice. It's, oh, yeah. it's something about just letting go of the inhibition, just like letting go of judgment, just like coming more present with the music and uh, just letting it flow, you know? Yeah, I mean, as someone who's interested in like health and happiness and heart opening optimization, I mean, mm -hmm. dance medicine is is some of the most potent, you know, nutritional benefits I can get. Totally it's so amazing. good just releasing with, with strangers when you realize that the term strangers is a crazy concept. You know, we get together with hundreds of people who we don't know, but you feel like they're you when like all of a sudden you're dancing and rubbing against someone else and you're all just one organism, man. It was beautiful. <laughs> so thanks for yeah, coming. Man, it that was, was an experience. Was and like, just like the age range. So like you have yeah, like, that? you have that people matter? that are probably like in their low twenties or before, no, like late teens up to like their sixties, just all look, different types. We're spirits in our hearts and we transcend whatever our physical body bounds us to. Of course, we have to work within those limits, but when you're on a, on a journey of like love building, like in a moment of ecstatic dance, what is age? It's, Come it's on. nothing. Man. It's nothing. Yeah. So what do you want to talk about today? Sorry to hijack <laughs> your conversation. No, man, that's good. That's, that's the natural flow of it. Um, yeah, so I just want to share with you guys something super inspiring. Jackson is in the middle of a voyage right now, mm. middle of a journey. Um, in the middle of my life. Yeah, I guess we're all on in a journey, right? In, in, a, in a broader sense. That's right. But um, yeah, he started on his bicycle way up in northern, I almost said Australia, <laughs> way up in northern Alaska. Might as well be. <laughs> and uh, he's heading, heading south and south and south all the way. Where, where's the final, where's the destination? So, so I spent the last hundred days, uh, I've ridden 4,000 miles from Anchorage, Alaska here to Berkeley, California, and that's just the the start of the journey but I've just changed my life around where my uh, the way I live my life is I, I live very minimalistically I have a few items that bring me all the value that I need in my life that fit in two little bags that I put on my bicycle and I've made it the purpose of my life to travel around explore the mother earth that we that we live on but also connect to as many beings that we share the planet with and just try to open my heart and love them and receive love from other people and also spread the teachings that I've uh, been so privileged to have accumulated so far in my young life. Just about oneness, just about connecting to each other, to appreciating every little thing that you have in your life that you take for granted. You know, we're, we're just sitting right now in the sun amongst oh, friends and there's a persimmon right here that we can eat. We might as well be like the luckiest people in this present moment with the amount of just chaos and violence and things that are going on in our world. So yes, I bike a lot. Uh, I'm vegan. I love to talk about eating healthy, about um, so many different things, but what's happening more and more with my activism and YouTube channel and also just my life is honoring that the purpose is to honor the, grat the gratitude and beauty that exists around us at all times if, you know, that, that we can tap into regardless of um, the things that are going on in our life that maybe we can perceive as negative. We all have stress and difficulties and hardship in our life, but I also think that we can tune into gratitude a lot more and we forget mm. to remember that simply being alive and having a heart to be able to love someone and just experience feelings, that's enough to have a purposeful life. Like you are a puzzle piece in the universe that connects us all together and we love you for just being you. Not based on how much money you have, what you look like, what you like to do, what you eat, it doesn't matter. 
more important than anything is that we're brothers and sisters and we need to look at each other and just say like, I love you because you're a reflection of me and we eat food and we poop and we talk to each <laughs> other and we're all the same. Because of that, we're all the same. So it's about like, what do you need today? What can I share with you to mm. put value into, into your life and make you love yourself more? Like, how can I facilitate oh, that? Right. So and I truly, been, I been. go into houses, I knock on strangers' doors, I tell them who I am, that I'm a nice person and I would love to spend an evening with you eating food, sharing what I have to offer and learning about your life. And I've spent the last hundred days doing that and connecting with incredible beings from animals to humans and mother earth and nature and my own self, just connecting with beings, learning about life that we're all one. And that's kind of summarizes what's been going on. Oh, and I also make daily videos of all of this and share these ramblings of philosophy on my YouTube channel. Yeah, and, and what's, I, what's the YouTube channel? It's called Plantriotic. Yeah, man. Check that out on YouTube. That's a, that was a beautiful encapsulation of, I guess, uh, yeah, your journey right now. It's and hard, it's hard it's, to put in a box. It's, it's you know? totally Cause, evolved. Because like, every day it changes. Like some days I wake up and my intention and purpose for the day is to like, oh my God, so many random things. Sometimes it's to like work on my freestyle rapping improv on the bike. And that's what I like focus on during the day. And I spend hours doing that. Sometimes it's to eat super healthy that day and I'll maybe go out of my way and bike places or stay with someone who lives on a farm just so I can kind of have that kind of day and then sometimes it's getting into someone else's shoes and going on a hike with a hunter and learning about that it's like why don't we wake up every single morning and decide what what we can do to serve ourselves and the uh, world and community most and I just want to say like with all of my YouTube channel and what I'm saying even in this video, I honor that I'm coming from an extremely privileged position. A combination mm. of privilege and hard work. You know, I've worked really hard to build up a YouTube channel where I can design my life where I, I have the privilege to wake up every morning and decide what I want to do. So it's a combination of, you know, privilege and hard work to get to a place where you can wake up every morning and honestly say what's going to serve me and my public community most today mm. um so don't think that i'm like delusional and think that if you have a family and a job and you need to make money and maybe you have health issues you have all this stuff that life puts on our shoulders i'm not saying like go wake up every morning and what what serves you the most today don't don't think about anyone else that's not realistic i'm all about being practical and making small steps every day within your means mm. to uh, to propel yourself to live the most meaningful life you can because no matter the situation you're coming from the privilege or lack of privilege you've had the trauma you've had in your life any of the obstacles even no matter that one thing I can say is that this is the one life you know you have to live mm. so regardless of the shit or the epicness that has been delivered to you in your life you still are entitled and you deserve to live the best life that you want to live so don't let anyone put you down because we need you in this universe and us as one to be the best version of yourself that you can be so that we can actually all come together so we need you to find more self-love and to do to follow your purpose hell yes man you just yeah why not shout out so much inspiration into the world um truth and yeah man that's that's what i think is beautiful um about your channel is it's kind of evolved um through the years and people can see that daily involvement through your vlogs you're not evolution is the word yeah man of, instead of involvement <laughs> i just wanted to say that i make problems like that all the time just make up words yeah. in the middle of a yeah, man. Yeah, but, but uh, yeah, focus on. I mean, I've seen it so much. A focus on gratitude, like you said, it's changed my life entirely the last few years. Uh, yeah. Just a practice of gratitude, and then just how you're connecting with people who don't hold the same beliefs as you. Like you're saying with hunters, you're staying but they with hold many of the um, same beliefs. Animal farmers, yeah. and um, yeah, and you're realizing the overarching commonalities rather than focusing on differences. We're you know? so obsessed with duality in our world. We, when we meet someone, there could be a hundred reasons why you're the same. Mm -hmm. You both love your families. You both want to experience a great Sunday, like a, you know, a Sunday afternoon like this. You love to eat persimmons, but maybe some person eats animals also. But I just listed three things, and I could have listed so many more things that actually connect you with people. 
Yeah. Man. So, you know, we're so obsessed with looking at duality and I put myself in situations where I am living in communities with people in people's houses and super intimate quarters mm -hmm. where they're doing things that may be different than how I choose to live my life right now. But that's the, yo that's the yogi Jedi training to in every situation that seems really uncomfortable where you with your ego wanna honor that duality and be like, oh, fuck this person. They're like making bacon this morning. I'm gonna, I'm gonna close down kind of my emotional shell with that person. Maybe don't talk to them. I feel like we're so obsessed with finding one thing that's different with us than the than the person who shows up in our life in front of us instead of taking that difference maybe using it as a form of conversation in order to open up a healthy discussion totally about right. how you feel or maybe in that situation you choose to just honor the similarities you all have and have a connection that goes beyond whatever ideology you have about food or even ethics like mm. more important than anything is just honoring that we're all brothers and sisters so I've become obsessed with that. Yeah. I, I like putting myself in those situations where I'm forced to move through the feelings that my ego maybe brings up, like this person's different. Don't you? Know, yeah, and any, I, I any of that, and instead try to move forward with love instead of judgment. And that's hard to do, right? Because we live in a world where we, for some reason, we want to put people into boxes and we're tribal, so we sometimes only hang out with our own and then we make judgments on others but at the end of the day every hunter conservative person that i've met on the road also just wants to give me a bed to sleep at night because they want me to be safe totally man. so connection you're seeing and compassion the goodness rules. in the world in all different forms you know and the goodness in people and um not viewing that as good or bad just yeah. um a different form of expression a different um form of understanding in this world and uh yeah I've, I've i've really been inspired at how you're connecting with people and i think it's a it's a nice um what you're putting out into the vegan community is really nice because there's been a lot of judgment and hate put out in the vegan community and um superiority and uh drama and drama and it's that i feel in a broader sense doesn't do us as nearly as much good as being able to connect with people on a more basal level mm. and um they see that love they see that goodness and then they open up their hearts to you know maybe exploring things further yeah um, i don't um I, I agree with everything that you said mm -hmm. a successful social justice movement will have a combination of uh making people uncomfortable which is inherently important in activating change right because mm -hmm. most people don't want to change so they're going to keep eating animals we're saying wait we want to inspire you to change because we actually think it's a culture and societal uh tragedy a a super violent action the way that humans in the modern world have uh, our, our relationships with animals as a whole just treating them as objects that we can do anything we want um that you know we think that is wrong so what's so i understand why uh a movement would move towards some form of aggression or hate as we've seen in the vegan youtube community because people get pissed off about injustice so i understand all the people that do that totally. but my my hope is that activists maybe go through that phase mm -hmm. and then learn the way to actually make effective change which is always through nonviolence mm -hmm. and violence uh, on YouTube is a form of violence. If you're hating people, if you're making up lies, if you're perpetuating duality and just hateful energy, you might not be going and abusing an animal, but you're still putting out violence into the world. So why don't we think about that and use activism in a positive way. Sing compassionate songs in the streets about animal hmm. rights. Leaflet and talk to people about uh, health in a like health-interested uh community at a festival or something like we need we need to ease people into making change and then we also need people on the side of more uh, direct action activism but it never needs to be violent mm. or hateful or perpetuate gossip like we need to spread the truth we need to connect uh with other beings and lead with compassion instead of violence um but you also have to be you also have to be an activist and make people uncomfortable but there's a difference between hating on others gossiping and putting people 
out of their comfort zone, but in a, in a compassionate way. Do you know what I mean? With, without judgment. Yeah. You can't ever judge people because odds are you ate animals too, just as I ate animals for so long in my life. I wasn't a bad person when I ate animals. It was just what I grew up doing. So we have to remember that when we communicate about animal rights to people that currently eat animals because mm. they probably love animals too. You just have to open up people's minds on how they they do have the option of aligning their actions with their morals instead of uh, living in sort of a disconnect, which is how most of the people uh, live in our world in terms of, you know, most people love animals and eat them. It doesn't, it doesn't make too much sense. Yeah, man. That's perfectly put. Um, but inspire people to go vegan however you want. If you're an athlete, become the best athlete and talk about eating plants. If you want to write cookbooks, do it. If you're the best makeup tutorial artist, do it and use cruelty-free products and don't let anyone judge you about the videos you make. You know, you mm. see that a lot too. No, the only way to be an activist is like go out in the streets. What are you talking mm. about? Like mm. people, I mean, a lot of people are turned off by that and others really enjoy just following figures in pop culture that just mention they're vegan. Be mm. the best human being you can with whatever you care about. Do it compassionately and try to try to spread how you're the best version of yourself to others. And one component of that is not contributing to animal suffering. So do whatever it is that that you want, whether it's YouTube videos, uh, being an athlete, being a doctor, but always be compassionate. We need more of that. Totally, man. And I'm always working on it too. You know? Yeah, we're we're always a work in progress. Uh, another question. Um, so you're you're traveling, you're sleeping in different places every night. You're oh, you know, camping out. Sunburn my bald head. Uh, yeah, man, you just cut that. So with all the flux in your life, yeah. you know, waking up in trailers where people are smoking cigarettes and uh, and meth you know, sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's some hardcore stuff going on. Um, how do you find um, a sense of normalcy or um, a sense of um, balance within yourself to find do you have any daily practices or rituals or um just things you do in your inner space that you'd like to share with people that can help when um you know things are, are not routine you don't have the perfect situation mm. every single day well the first advice i would give is to honor that life is spontaneous and unpredictable so even any lifestyle hack or practice that you do have which we will talk about and can serve most people can serve most people in their life I think the biggest practice I have is to wake up every morning and regardless of anything I can think of that's negative going on in my life maybe I did wake up in a damp cold trailer without heating the kind of people I didn't connect with on the level that maybe I connect with you as a, as a vegan, my age, uh, putting out content on YouTube, whatever, someone I didn't connect with as much, you know, it, instead of thinking about every uh, annoying part of the day, perfect example is, you know, when I'm biking up a mountain on mile 40 and the rain is starting to get hard and icy because I'm going up in elevation, I don't know where I'm gonna sleep that night and I'm running out of food and there's so many reasons why I can say, Fuck, the wind is being so tough right now. Everything is going against me. Why is the world bullying me, right? Yeah, there's helicopters overhead. Yeah, we can, we can take <laughs> no. a moment to let those pass, so it's probably not bad. But, you know, our minds in the modern world, they, for some reason, they're programmed to get triggered by one little thing that happens in your life that isn't the best, and mm. then you go down a spiral of saying, oh, I'm such a victim right so what I do because I put myself in such tough situations sometimes if you wake up every morning take a breath maybe do a meditation feel all the reasons why get all those discomforts and things that come to the front of your head at first and just list them off say hello to them mm -hmm. yeah it's tough it's raining uh, the list goes on and then ask yourself did you put yourself in that situation or are you really a victim? And sometimes people are victims, and that's really sad, and I hope that you have a support system, and uh, I hope that other people come and help you to overcome that. Mm -hmm. um, but for me, I live such a, a blessed life that 99% of the obstacles and struggles in my life 
are self-inflicted. Mm. I put myself on the mountain that morning. I didn't have to be there. So instead of being annoyed or sad um, in the morning or at any time of the day when something triggers you, instead ask yourself, what's going well in my life right now? You know, what, what can I be grateful for in this situation? I'm biking up in the rain and I'm freezing, but I have a YouTube channel where I don't have to go do a job that doesn't bring me meaning. Mm. I have food in my panniers. I know that I that in a, in a little bit I'll be warm because I have people that look after me and friends and I'm, and I'm so privileged. I have a body that functions perfectly. If you wake up every morning and you have the choice to go ride a bike or go take a run, you're doing Bless, better man. than so many people on the planet who physically aren't able to or maybe don't have the time or don't have the resources, or when they walk out of their house, they're fearing you know, being assaulted or killed at every single moment. A lot of human beings live like that in the world every day. So my main practice, you know, you know all the regular practice, med practices. Meditation is wonderful. Practicing on your yoga mat once in a while, that's awesome. Moving your body, it's gonna pump in endorphins and feelings into your, into your body and heart that make you so happy. Um, what else? What are other good practices? Uh, journaling, well, journaling, meditation, communicating with friends, you know, having space for uh, just open talks from your heart, being vulnerable. All that stuff is amazing and that's going to improve your life and I recommend it. But the number one lifestyle practice I have to f for me to be able to wake up every day and truly be happy and have meaning in my life is to tune into the things that you're grateful for as soon as you can in the mm -hmm. day. And then every time you're triggered by something that gives you a feeling of jealousy, of hatred, of discomfort, ask yourself, am I a victim right now? Or is this a self-inflicted wound that I can instead choose to find the gratitude in this situation? Mm -hmm. And it's not gonna work all the time. Sometimes shitty things happen and you can feel that pain, but 90 something percent of the time, we freak ourselves out at things that we actually don't need to freak out about. And I'm all about reducing the anxiety and unnecessary responsibilities even in your life that aren't serving you at this moment. And instead try to try to base your day off of being as grateful as you can in every moment. I've been trying to do that and it's done a lot for my life recently. Instead of always worrying about what you can do next, what you need to bring more in in your life, other people that will make your life better, like we have everything built into our being to find gratitude at every moment just for being alive we build shields in our modern world that tells us we need material items or money or a change in life in order to find that happiness but good luck going on that journey because it's going to lead you back to yourself what you mm. always have Fuck. <laughs> it's so hard because our world isn't as conducive, at least the world that I live in or was raised in isn't as conducive to learning those values at a young age. Mm. I bet there are communities in the world that I can't wait to go visit and explore that cultivate that. Mm. But I think we're told a lot of things that aren't true Yeah, man. about West, how to make us happy. Western culture, materialism. Um, but, you know, thank God for it too right yeah we get to spread our messages to the people and that's why it's all yin yang mm -hmm. so all this stuff we're talking about all uh the negative parts of western society man and all the violence they're the it's true also, blessings yeah, it's also well. perfect it's yeah. an important recipe in the uh in the stew of the universe that is always perfectly simmering on the stove at all times and it's all about um following your duty and honoring that the violence is okay but it's also okay if you feel it's your duty to try to change it. Mm -hmm. That's okay too. But you still have to honor that it's perfect as it is. Man. So much perfection all around us, man. That was uh, that was beautiful. Mm, you've, you've shared a lot of good stuff. Um, yeah, I'm I'm super inspired to uh, just I don't know follow your follow your journey wherever it leads. Um, you're just in the Bay Area another what week week or so, and then you're 
on your way further south? Yeah, so yeah. I'll be heading south. Um, my trip doesn't have a destination or an end date. I, this is my semi-permanent lifestyle. And as I said, my intention is to connect with as many people as possible, spread the teachings that I have accumulated in my life, and also just bring in new teachings and learn. Mm. I honor every single day I go on, the, I, I live this way, live an adventurous lifestyle. I learn more and more each day how I don't really know anything, you know. I was, I'll, I'll leave with a little anecdote story. I was in uh, Yukon, Canada, up north in Whitehorse, staying with this beautiful vegan couple, Megan and Sam, and we were talking about the Northern Lights and the Aurora. Mm -hmm. And I was like, huh, I, want, like, I wonder if I'll get to see that on my trip. I really hope I do. They were like, should we go look outside, see what's going on? I'm like, sure. And the sky was dancing with green, oh patterny layers that were doing things that when I looked at the sky and I saw what was going on I said to myself if this show can be going on in the thing that I look up every day and it's usually it's been blue every day of my life but today it's different I don't know the fuck about anything and we really don't you know we can walk outside any day and things are completely different someone can come into your life that changes your life at that moment and you had no control for that person to come into your life but it happened you know we we think we walk outside and we know how everything's gonna go and the sidewalks are here and we go to our job which is always there we don't know we have no control of anything it's all open um, and honoring that openness I think brings a lot of space and beauty into your life because attaching onto anything you think you have control over it's not gonna work out well because things inf influence or do things independently out of your control we don't have as much control as we think totally man totally um i should just stop talking because <laughs> this will go on forever no you're good man i don't want this to just be question answer question answer i want it to be free flow redirected it's free. this is really a podcast yeah man this is turning from a short interview into a podcast which this guy also has right you have a podcast yeah i'm a really bad podcaster i have a hundred episodes i used to be really <laughs> good at it but i haven't posted recently but my last episode is me in a tent uh like semi in a diluted tired state i think on day like 20 of my trip or something I was in a tent camping by this lake, like so cold, and I just got inspired to record a podcast. And I just went into my tent and I just eaten like macaroni with ketchup and nutritional yeast. And I was just feeling fucked up. I was like many days out in the wilderness and I just put the phone like right next to my head and just kind of talked real slow. And because that's just how I was like talking at that moment. Mm -hmm. um, and that's my last podcast episode. It's like an hour of just explaining how I felt in my heart at that present moment of my journey. So if you want to go listen to that, that could be fun. Or the hundred other episodes I have <laughs> with more constructive interviews about spirituality, yoga, uh, health, animal rights, all the things that I'm interested. Hell yeah, man. Yeah. Lots of stuff. He's got a ton of content. Um, you should go check out and uh, follow his journey from here forward as well. It's, yeah, dude, it's going to be exciting. And thank you for serving the people in your way. You know, I've had so many benefits from mm -hmm. physical therapy and mm -hmm. people who have mm -hmm. this wisdom to help my body so I can be the best version of myself and also just be happy and move freely. So I appreciate your service to all of us as well. Hell yeah, man. Thank you for doing love this. Love you, bro. Yeah, man. Thanks. Good stuff. Yeah. All Peace. right. Much Hope love. you guys enjoyed. Dream Extreme. Namaste.